the hair has a history in this country because the longer the hair was, the more you are treated with your mom. You are setting me up. Any time from now, <laughs> any time from now, any time from now, I think I'll collapse. Oh my God, it's gonna fall. I think if you successfully remove that, I'm going to make this thing fall. It's going to fall. Oh, yeah. You're there. Oh, and welcome to Talking Heads. My name is Kimani Mbogo. This is where I bring on personalities who you care about and want to know some of their stories and want to know some of their, <laughs> what they do in the dark when you're not watching them. And we want to know if they can play Jenga because I'll be having a Jenga here with me as we talk about uh, current affairs, politics, social life, and all of that. Now, I have a special guest with me. He is probably the youngest person in government right now as government has been traditionally for all people but he has changed that his name is Zaki Nothia the youngest CAS in the current government of uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta and Mr. Kenothia how are you doing? I'm very fine uh, Kimani. I see you have a you have a very big office by the way. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Is it an improvement? Well it is because uh, it used to be smaller than uh, you see it today but they had to expand because of the demands uh, of the office. Mm. And they also, the dignitaries, sometimes we, ho we host here, mm. just to look as government under the designation I am uh, under. And did you always want to get into government or is it something that just happened along the way? Because it, it looks like a typical government office. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to, uh, to lead. Government happens to offer one of the best infrastructures of nurturing leadership. I have always wanted to get into service of the, our people, mm. right from the day I was in primary school, all the way to secondary, then university, then leaving university, following the path of leadership through politics. Okay, so for you it's about leadership? It has been about giving service, mm. which you can't unless you're a leader, Mm -hmm. and that happened best if you're in government because government has resources and has infrastructure and has goodwill and mechanism to do it. So I, I always wanted to serve as a leader. In government or out of government has never been clear until now. So when you let me say? You know? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll be testing your leadership skills and strategy because we have a game here at Jenga. We'll be playing Jenga as we have this conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about your, we'll talk about your journey. We'll talk about how you conquered university politics. Mm -hmm. And then you tell us a bit about, about your personal life. But sure. I want to see if you know how to play Jenga. Mm -hmm. uh, I've showed you a bit before we went mm -hmm. uh, on camera. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who don't know how to play Jenga, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, these are just blocks. It's, it's a game of strategy. You have to know where to pull out a block and where to put it. Uh, and you have to know where to put the next blocks that your opponent uh, loses. Mm -hmm. So in this case, mm -hmm. it's Zach against Kimani. And on Talking Heads, we'll be having more personalities come on. So let's see who's going to win on this one uh, as we continue. So you want to go first? Well, let me start because uh, I have never played this game again. Mm -hmm. And thank you for introducing me to it. I've, only, I've always uh, seen you host people playing it, but I've never, I've never played it. I never knew I would be on the, I never knew I would be on the testing. Okay. Uh, and I appreciate. Although, right. if, if this is about strategy, yeah, I hope you're not going to condemn me if I fail today. No, we're not by going condemning to condemn my you because it's your first time. <laughs> anyway, yeah, let's talk about university politics. Yes, yes. You are, you are um, the Secretary General of Sony when mm. you were still being called Sony. Mm. How did you go about it? It's a very powerful organization in, mm. in university, probably the most uh, talked about, the, mm. the most popular university student organization. How did you conquer university politics? Uh, what I would say is that first I was not, uh, I was not the Secretary General. Mm. I was a chairman. Okay. The Secretary General perhaps uh, stuck more in the minds of many young people because it was held by the first Le the first lady to ever have been Secretary General was a lady in my time mm -hmm. uh, called Edith Mwiregi. So I was a chairman mm -hmm. when it was still uh, the powerful rolling uh, student organization in Kenya mm -hmm. uh, made up of Kenyans of all walks coming from all places in this country uh, yeah. from the lake 
to the mountain, to the valley, and to the desert. Those are the people I became their leader. And so that's where it started for you? Yes. And your campaigns mm -hmm. during that time, mm -hmm. did you have to get money to, be, to, to campaign or did you just go with your charm? First of all, charm. Secondly, strategy. Then, I see, you, I, see money. You, I see you using strategy here because uh, you're putting it at the center. Yes. But continuing, going forward, yes. uh, you might need to put it on the side. It should so be, that, okay. So that, so that, so that it, doesn't, it doesn't fall very fast. I, I've always been told yeah. that uh, as a leader, you need to be moderate. The moderate is about finding the golden mean in life. Not too radical, not too soft. Okay. And that is always in the middle. That is why perhaps say, I ended up putting it in the middle. <laughs> because extremes are always extremes. Uh, poisonous. Those people that are always extreme, you are either too good or too bad. You can't be a good leader. Speaking of too good or too bad yes. and extremes, yes. you're an extreme supporter of President Ruhu Kiyata. Yes, yes. And you, you have not been silent about it. You have not, mm -hmm. there is no gray areas about it. I've, I On your Facebook, it. you mm -hmm. go out and, yes. you know, uh, show your support for the president. Mm -hmm. Why so? Why do you believe in his dream so much? I, 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 up to this time as we play Jenga, yes. I believe that President Kenyatta convinced I, as he did to the rest of the Kenyans who voted for him, mm -hmm. on manifesto and his dream for this country, and his unrelenting support for the unity of Kenya. That one has always uh, been very open and clear, especially after 2007 mess that happened in this country. Mm -hmm. President Kenyatta has always shown passionate, uh, has always shown passionate desire to unite the country. Well, the base may have been the post-election violence of 2007, but he has already spoken about it in public and out of public. He's very clear by saying, we live together because even if we have roads, we have uh, the economy bu uh, bulging and becoming good for over every Kenyan. Even if we become a second, rather a mid-level income country, without unity, we cannot enjoy and live in this country. This is why he has always been fasting, unity, Secondly, let us live in harmony and then we can become rich or poor together. Because either way, if you are rich or poor together, you can surmount the challenges of the country. Mm. If it is not, whatever wealth you can create as a country, it will always end up into naught. And good examples are in Libya. Uh, other examples are in places like uh, uh, warring nations of uh, Eastern Europe, where regardless of the wealth the countries have created, Without a unit of purpose, these people have always ended up uh, butchering each other. I am happy to have been an adult at the time President Kenyatta vied for an office. I'm happy because looking at the people of his caliber and age and looking at the people who have been ahead of him, nobody has been as resolute as bringing this country together as President Kenyatta. So I supported the president before 2017, but I supported him more because of bringing together harmony and peace in this country at a time that we are facing collapse as a nation. All right, that's fair enough. And you you speak about unity of the country mm -hmm. and you your support for him. Did did that did that influence the decision to appoint you to the position of CS and how you can tell us how it happened first of all were you aware <laughs> that you were going to be to be chosen or how did it happen and how are you liking the game are you finding I, any, I, any blocks I'm actually thinking you are you are setting me up anytime from now <laughs> anytime from now anytime from now I think I collapse <laughs> I can I can see you are setting me up that, that's the game it's a game I can see the way you're looking at me they say the game is the game the game is a game. Yeah. Well, let me say, Kimani Mbugwa, I am not sure uh, how the president appointed me. Mm -hmm. This one I can I can say in open in open ground. Mm -hmm. I I am not sure why. Rather, I am not sure how the president appointed me, but I'm confident and sure in my heart and in the chambers of uh, my 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 honest honest thinking that 
the why I can try to trace. The why is, as you say, my consistent pattern and passion in empowering the young people in this country, my outspoken out, outspokenness and loud voice in ensuring that we are an egalitarian society. I've always said we, 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 all of us cannot be equal, but there should be parameters that put us, puts us together. There should, be, there should be things that all of us share together, like good health. Everybody should be entitled to health uh, that is affordable and uh, accessible. We have always said that young people need jobs. These jobs need to be created by industrializing our country, trying to have cottages, industries. And I started speaking this while I was still in the university. And this is why mm. uh, I would say the why perhaps is in the passion, in the desire, in the dream, and in the strategy, as, as the strategy as we are playing here. Okay. But wh What's how? It? I cannot yeah. tell. I don't know how the president ended up appointing me. There are very many qualified So did you just people. get a call? Did you, did you just call you and tell you, yeah, Kinodia, you're the CAS for education now. Come to, off, come to the office. Uh, the truth of the matter hmm, mm -hmm. is that the first of the knowledge to know that I had been appointed in the office, I had it on radio as I was going my day-to-day -day activities. I actually was listening to a popular radio station and I heard that we are interrupting our programs to bring you the president's speech as he speaks from Mombasa. It was the uh, 14th of January. And uh, I said, well, I was interested in the speech he was going to make. So I stopped the car near Petro Station at uh, Limuru Road, uh, near uh, Petro Station, Kobil. There's a popular Java, Java house uh, there. So I wanted also to drink some tea on my way to town. Uh, then I heard the president is going to speak. So I parked my car in the petrol station so that after his speech, I can drink coffee and go. Mm. Now I heard all the president said, finally, I had to say, I am bringing younger people in government to understand their colleagues ahead of preparing them for future roles. And I said, oh, well, that's a good thing. Kenyans have been crying that the president is only bringing old people in government. And there had been a lot of backlash, 2018, 2019, in his attempts to bring professional and experienced people. Young and old people alike condemned the move to bring um, people like a former vice president who has, uh, in his right, been a servant of this country, Moody Awori. Mm. And I remember, controversially, I supported the president's move. By saying in this board, to a point, would be a word. Yeah, 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 I supported him, and I tell he's, you why. He's I supported you. You know, he could be even ninety-seven, but that one does not make him tired. It does not make him dumb. This man, the vice president, remember, he was not just a man, has had a track record of work he started while he was still in private sector. The place he was appointed is nothing but a custodian of money for sporting activities for young people. I think sports fund. And these are places where the president said, if I put a younger people here, this money end up not doing the work it is intended to do. Let me put this man, who has been a champion of young people when he was vice president by introducing things he introduced, to oversee this money. He's not going to be doing any work, but to oversee that this money is intended for the purpose it is created for. That was the reason I supported Moody Awori. I also supported the, creation, uh, the appointment of the chairman of the KRA board, Mudaura. Yeah. Be, being uh, the former head of public service for all the lo long time he served, this man was going to steer the Revenue Allocation Authority on how to correct money for the sake of our country, for the sake of our increasing revenue for taxation. These are I I things I always supported by clear explanation. I, I didn't just say, oh, the president should appoint. No, no, I said, for the few men that the president has appointed, this is important. I also said, young people who have been appointed before us, and I mentioned them, including one of the latest CS who had been dropped from cabinet, were people who had let not just the country down, but their fellow youth. Others were running to make money. Others were running to have excessive uh, show of power. Others were running to disrepute the name of youth by engaging in activities that do not glorify, you know, uh, our morality, our, our, our upbringing, and that brought our country into ridicule. If you remember, I will not mention names here, but 
I supported such acts for that purpose. So today, mm -hmm. looking back, I was not. Uh, I would say my support was not just was not just rational, but I was also very quick to condemn people who did not uh, place our country as a country of destination for outsiders and also a hub of ambitions for our young people. Those are some of the things I, 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 I would look back and say. So you're telling us that you never knew. You just had your name pop up on radio. Yeah, and, and that's the truth. I can't change the truth. That's the truth. I had it on radio. One day later, I saw myself added in a WhatsApp group to coordinate I, amongst many others, who had been appointed on the next course of action. Mm. Yeah. I, had no, I, I never knew it before. Because if I had known it before, that very day, it was on uh, Monday, uh, Monday or Tuesday, 14th of January, that very day, I would have had been a man with very high spirits. But I remember I was very low spirited that day. Yeah, somehow I could not, I, I didn't feel the best. My wife had actually left me uh, asleep. Had gone to do other things. Mm. She, uh, she left me sleeping. Uh, and then I was going to meet somebody at Boulevard. On my way now. That's Boulevard, uh, the that's Boulevard next Hotel. KBC. Yeah, yeah, that's why I was going to meet a friend of mine for lunch. Yeah. So my day was disorganized. I did not have the high spirit of a man who knew that good tidings were coming. So yeah, uh, there is no lie, I, and I will not dare. I see you. I see you have a good strategy here. <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna be possible to remove the. the okay, you have. Wow, Zach is gonna beat me at this, guys. <laughs> He's gonna not. beat me at this. We only have one. I, this I, tower is so unstable. Wow. <laughs> Don't worry. You, I, I know you're setting me up. Anytime from, any from now, I'm going to fall. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can find one <laughs> in the middle. Ah, uh, Zach, Zach. Mm -hmm. Wow. Here, here we go. So tell us about your first day in office. When you say you were added to a WhatsApp group after yeah, yeah, being yeah. appointed uh, as By yes. all of us, all of us who had been appointed that mm -hmm. very day were added in a group to coordinate that this is what you need to do next mm -hmm. so that now you can. And one of the major issues was the coordination of swearing in. So you, who, you have seen who, that photo Who was there. in charge? Yeah, I've seen, I've seen a photo in your office yeah, yeah, yeah. of you being sworn in, yes. in, uh, in at the Mombasa State House. Yes, yes, yes. That's why we were sworn in. That's who was coordinating was. all of this exercise? Uh, the, the everybody who had been appointed in each ministry was handed over to the principal secretaries of that ministry so that now they can coordinate them. Mm. So the WhatsApp group we added uh, was a central coordinating group of uh, the president's men. I actually had not met them, but they had the number. So they had you say, my name is Kimani Mbogwa. Uh, I have added you to this group because you need to be at this place and this place for the purpose of your appointment to be sworn in. You know, uh, there are people you, you would not know. There are people I have never met since then. I just met them then. After the purpose was done, then the group was uh, over. I it was for coordination. It, it hadn't been before WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. I know it was phone call. It, it used to happen on letter or phone calls or letter or emails or whatever. But this time, because now, the, I mean, WhatsApp is better coordinating tool. Just add everybody here, make a singular communication. Instead of saying, Kimani Bogu, how are you? My name is Akin I am calling you from the president's office because you have been appointed ABCD. Now prepare yourself for ABC. You know, you know it's tedious. Because you are calling Kimani Bogwa, then you call Zaki Kenothia and yeah. a barrage of other people. But on WhatsApp, it was one person who added all of us. It was actually only two of them in that group. The rest were all of us who had been appointed. And we were... Were we, were we 13, 13? I think we were 13. 13. Uh, no, no, nine. Mm -hmm. Nine. Nine appointees. Mm -hmm. Then two other people. So we are just 11. I don't even remember those two people. But one would uh, later come to know was working with the president's delivery unit. Mm. Yeah, I don't remember the names. I could tell you. I mean, it, was not a, it is not a secret. So had you met the president before? Have you, have you met the president before... Your appointment, were you friends? Were you guys talking? I have met the president before, and I will tell you where. Mm -hmm. Okay. I met the president. First time I met the president, 
I was the chairman of Sono. And he came to the University of Nairobi graduation square to deliver, uh, rather to launch, mm -hmm. Uwezo Fund. Kenyans who can remember would know that uh, Uwezo Fund was the 6 billion shillings that were saved from avoiding a return to election in 2013. And they made a promise as he was campaigning that if you elect me one round, if you're able to achieve 30 percent, uh, 51 50 50 percent plus one if you are able to do that we are going to save six billion and he appealed to kenyans then he told the young people if this money is saved six billion i will have the money transferred to an account which will give young people and women empowerment oh now women and kenyans uh, youth thought oh that's a good promise we will we will vote for him one time and that's what kenyans did they voted 50, you remember it was 50% plus, the, was it 0.9? No, 51%, 51, 51 yeah, plus 0 0.7. Yes. That's how we won and we avoided a, a, return to, a return to election. That money was the one that he came to launch in September the same year. He won the election in the University of Nairobi. That's when I met him first. And we then uh, talked, 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 talked. I was the chairman that time. After that, we would meet again uh, later while we were launching Jubilee Party. I was heavily involved in the uh, launching of the Jubilee Party. And when we met there, uh, that the party is good, is launched, everywhere people are doing this and this. And then the rest was history. So I have met the president. But uh, so that's two people times. assume, no, no the, the, those are just the times that are public. Okay. Uh, that I'm saying now, this is when we, we would meet. Mm. But president is cool. Many people have met the president uh, formally and uh, informally mm. because uh, he's an outgoing personality and he has a clean and good heart. These things always happened in politics and out of politics. So when I was appointed now, it's now it's official that now you are one of the designated assistant ministers. You are expected to do your work now. And this is the work I'm trying to do here, even as we play uh, yeah. with you here. Then I want to see a strategy here. That, I think that's going to make it fall. Is it? Let's see. Okay. You're not too bad at this. I, I'm playing with the best. <laughs> so I'm not, going to I'm not going to let him down. <laughs> if I'm playing with the best, how do I then let them down? <laughs> My best you're referring to me? Yes. I'm playing with you here, Kimani. I, you have played this thing more. I have never played it. This is the first time. I've played Jenga, I think, about three times now. Mm, three times is good enough to know your mistakes. Three times. Yeah. And it's good to know your mistakes and how to correct them. Oh my God, it's gonna fall. It's gonna fall. It's gonna fall. It's going to... Oh, yeah. You're there. So now... My it, strategy. Yeah, so it means then for the me... The strategy is working. For, then it means for me it is imminently going to fall. <laughs> <laughs> so, before you make the tower fall, because yes. you might. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't, yes. getting into government mm, mm. as a CES, mm. how did you maneuver through the, um, the bureaucracy? How do you know who to call, uh, how to set up an office? Mm. What, all, all, all of these things, were they done for you? Uh, did you figure out your job description? Were you given a job description and told this is what to do? And what was that job description? Uh, first, I think because it's going to fall either way. <laughs> Let's see. I think if you successfully remove that, mm. I'm going to make this thing fall. To the jenga inchi. To the jenga inchi hapa lakini naona ni kama itanguka. Hapa na tutagusha inchi. Zach, strategy. He's removed all the base ones. So I, I, this thing, <laughs> the whole tower is standing on one pillar <laughs> below. Okay, now, so this, tell us about this pillar. The, yeah, is President Kenyatta. Upon, upon <laughs> whom? I want to. No, I'm just. Yes. Ki I'm not kidding. Yes. This country is standing the way it is standing today, because of the magnanimity of President Kenyatta, mm -hmm. that he has been able to stabilize all the politics. He's been able to inspire Kenyans on the dream he has for us. Mm -hmm. And he's been able to inspire 
the people to live to their maximum. So tell us about your, your how you maneuvered through Yeah, let me answer your question. Yeah, bureaucracy. thank you. Let me answer your question. The moment you are appointed and given a mandate, government is organized. And government has all the mechanisms possible to deliver a mandate that is attached to you. So it is always expected that the headquarters of the ministry upon which anybody is appointed is known. So like now, I was appointed a chief administrative secretary, minister of education. It is known that the ministry headquarters are in Jogo House. So that's the beginning. That's where my office is. So you go there. If you see the office that is designated for you, if it is available, you move in. If it is not available, other people would be moved in to fit you where you ought to be. Now, in this case, there was an office for me. And remember, we are two. So the office I ought to have gone was, was uh, granted to the other colleague of mine. Then uh, they looked for another office for me, but I didn't like it. It was small, it was stuffy, and it was uh, not expansive. Could not expand if you wanted to expand the office. So entire building, 10 floors. No, build, no office would befit this position, which was not occupied. So I asked them, the ministry is big. Do we have offices outside here? Then they said, uh, yes, but it is always advised that you be at the headquarters. I said, it's okay, but it's not possible. Can we move in? We are in the, I am young. If you need me, I can run. If you need me to uh, whatever time I can manage and I'll be there. So that's how I ended up going to places where Ministry of Education owns spaces. And I settled on this space here, Uchumi House, seventh floor. And I settled here for the purpose that you have confirmed this morning, that you like the office. <laughs> I was looking for compliments like yours it's and a nice comfort office. from you. It's a nice office. Yes. Uh, but having a nice office and delivering is another to, issue. Yeah, to, completely. So, I, I hope I'm delivering. Yeah. I hope Kenyans will judge me when the time comes. We'll I'm judge trying, you based yeah, on yeah, what yeah, you yeah. do. Actually, but tell that's us so what far, I want. So mm. far, what exactly is on your plate in terms of delivering uh, as, as a chief administrative secretary. secretary. What me, is your role? Let me put it straight. My, my role is simply to assist the cabinet secretary. I'm his deputy. Uh, what we used to call in the former regime, assistant minister. That is the mandate designated to the chief administrative secretary in, in the Ministry of Education, in the Ministry of Treasury, in the Ministry of Agriculture, in the Ministry of Youth, and all these ministries. All CSs are basically the deputy ministers. But that's, that's just a word. I am so excited to have been uh, appointed this time by the president and I thank God mm -hmm. and I thank the appointing authority because I could not have been in government at a better time than now. Why do I say so? I am currently involved with uh, the resuscitation, the revamping and the re-engineering of TVET in Kenya. That is technical and vocational education training. This is basically to put skills in the hands of young people. All the hula baro and the noise and the hue that we interact with every day of young people desperate that they have no jobs. They have gone to university, they have degree, but no job. They have gone to colleges, they have got diploma, but they have no job. They have finished their masters and they have PhDs and they had first class and no job. It's very disheartening. And because of the, of the way the economies are growing, collapsing, and surviving across the globe, uh, across the globe, it is not possible to guarantee formal jobs. Many companies are going tech, tech way. Technology is replacing human labor. So jobs that would have been done by five young ladies trained as secretariats is being done by one computer. And this computer will just need one person and, and uh, uh, you know, operating it. So, because it is not going to change anytime soon, and we cannot see it changing, we have decided to reconfigure the training of our young people. Mm. And instead of concentrating and overhyping the degree, we are asking young people to accept and go back to national polytechnics, go to technical training institutes, and go to uh, vocational centers to go and get a skill, a year or a two or a three, become an artisan, become a technician, and become a craftsman. The economy is growing. We need more masons than we need an engineer, structural engineer. 
because one building like this one with 19 floors will just need one structural engineer but it will need more than 400 masons 100 plumbers we will need 700 electricians we will need uh, uh, more than 100 painters these jobs that are technical are the jobs we are asking young people to register so far mm. it is so good that we have put money to a tune of 26 billion in paying for school fees for the young people to go into this institution. We have built over 200 technical training institutes in Kenya, and we are going to build 90 more before the end of 2022, so that every constituency has its own technical training institute. We are going to revamp uh, the training of our young people by equipping with modern equipments. In our plumbing training institution, construction training institution, we will put all the new and high technology machines to train our young people to be to leverage on the new technologies of building and all these things. That is what I've been doing. Had I not given you uh, the appointment today, I would be in the field, ensuring that what I'm telling you with my mouth mm. is happening in the ground. But I thought, because you are my friend, and secondly, you are doing also good work that uh, is informing <laughs> our young people, I thought I will not do it, mm. then wait for you to come in the office and sit here. It's a good thing, and I see you're about to beat me at Zenga. Let me uh, see if I can get another block. And this is a beautiful game, by the way, and it's made by young people. In is it? They're very creative. And this is a technical uh, work, because it is not about... It is made by people. These woods have been have been made by young people, mm. and it is a skill to make this block. The way they are arranged is also technical work. This playing is only theory in mind now. And strangely... Mm. So this is what Zach has done. He's removed the, the block from below. And I'm trying to look for a one that is in a place where the tower would fall. Ah, thank God I got one. So let's see. Just remove another one so, so I can see you make this tower fall. Oh. So, so unstable. I can feel it now. <laughs> You're the one who removed the block below. I thought I was destabilizing your base. <laughs> okay, let's see. So you have to calculate your moves. Yes. And you have to check on the blocks and see uh, secretly. Secretly surveil the blocks to see if there's one that you can remove. This thing you have beaten me now. Uh, don't lose yet. Uh, oh, he found one. He found one. <laughs> but don't be too sure. He found one. Don't be too sure. Wait, yeah, you can, as, you can stand. Oh, oh is it alive? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Zach, unajenga nchi kabisa. Now, that one is by sheer lack of God. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about your style, your hair. It's it's that defining style. It's signature style. Mm. Your hair and your goatee, your yeah. beard. <laughs> <laughs> why why did you decide to go afro always? All right, thank you. I think uh, when I was in the university, I used to shave completely mm -hmm. because I would wear a tie, mm -hmm. and then I would wear a suit. But I decided uh, I felt baggaged by the fact that the kind of dress I was wearing was inspired from uh, Britain was inspired from the so-called white man's land. And I remember in my training, I was there as a, I'm a trained as a political scientist and uh, economist. Now I'm about to finish my law degree. But while all these things were happening, I started becoming agitated by the fact that we are coming from a colonial legacy. These legacies going all, all through our culture, our politics, our government structures, and more importantly, our religion. Mm -hmm. That is largely inspired by uh, the colonial domination. So I started questioning why I should do the things that are thought to be the white things. And, and by the way, a part of the problem we are facing today is uh, white co co collar jobs. That we only think that the only jobs that are good are white collar. Because there is minimal contact with uh, the world, but there is money. Only pain and the mind determines. 
Now we have ended up hating the blue collar, the juakali, the artisans, the skills. We have ended up uh, with the wrong, but coming back to why am I here? I started looking back to the founders of this country, like Mzejo Mokenyata, Julius Nyerere, looking at uh, Nelson Mandela, looking at uh, Mze of Ghana, uh, Kwame Nkrumah, uh, Patrice Lumumba of uh, DRC Congo, uh, studying all these founders of Africa, the Pan-Africanists. I realized one of the things they always held in high regard was the way they dressed. They could not accept to be held down by the white man in the form of addressing. Later in life when they became presidents, sometimes they used to, they would wear a tie. But you could tell this was for official meetings only. So I decided the first thing to conquer a man is to dress him down and to shave his hair. The hair has a history in this country because the longer the hair was, the more you associated with Mau Mau. And Mau Mau was a good thing because it was about saving our country from the chains of imperialism. So why don't we go back to that hair that saved our country from imperial forces? If we had such hair, then we would be able to save our country from the forces that perhaps bedevil us today, forces of corruption, mm. forces of ethnicity, the negative, forces of hate, forces of poverty. Maybe if we regain freedom by, first of all, having the freedom to keep my hair the way I want, I can have the freedom to do what I want. So that, basically that's why I kept my hair, to regain, to regain my identity as an African and a son of the mountain, to feel that the way, I am is the, way I, the way I am is the way I like it. It is not you liking me, it is me liking myself, including the way I dress. Mm. I, I rarely do suits. And I rarely why do by you the way, suit so much? The last time I wore a tie was out of coercion. And I have never, I have never been back to it. I'll not be in the, in the, in the coming days. I will not be in a tie. I can tell you, uh, the day you see me in a tie, you know I have been coerced by forces stronger than I to have the tie. <laughs> okay? So my hair is basically identity hair. Mm -hmm. uh, somehow, it has ended up as my signature. Uh, everybody now in the villages refer me to Yule Jamawa Nyuele Kubwa. You know, and uh, I have no problem and at all. You call yourself son of the soil. Son of the soil. It has ever what does that mean? That. Son of the soil is uh, African soil, uh, I've already said. I've heard people say there are people who are called son of the soil. It is okay. People like Kwahome Mutahi, the Whispers, was also called son of the soil. The, the freedom fighters in uh, South Africa, in uh, Ghana, Nigeria, everywhere, they were probably regarded as son of the soils. Mm -hmm. Okay, Son of the soil is about re-rooting myself back to my heritage. I want you to know that I am also considerably enthusiastic by, enthused by my culture, and my Kikuyu culture, Kikuyu culture. Yeah. I am thrilled by it, and until I am son of that soil, then I cannot be an ambassador of my culture, and proudly as I am. Well, so it's, as, it's as, 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 Mount, as a Kikuyu people, I am son of the soil. Mm -hmm. As Kenyan, I am son of my Kenyan soil and more importantly as an African, that I am rooted deeply in the African soil. And none, and no, none, nobody and no force can remove me from there. So it's impossible to conquer me until you conquer my soil. That's why I'm son of the soil, but people don't know. People have their own thinkings about why I'm son of the soil. So let's, let's go back to the Jenga a bit, because uh, I know, you watching, you're waiting for this to fall. I just want to name it Angusha Ikitu. I hope it's not me. Oh, he found one. He found a block. So basically, the rules of the game if you make the tower fall, you lose. And Zach is doing very well. You're doing very well for the first time in this game. Is it? Thank you. Don't say there was a, a colleague of mine who dropped the block. Ha! Oh, I found one too. Hmm, this so, is an involving game. Yeah, I it love is. it. It is. There's, this there's, is. there's a lot of mind here. Yeah, there's strategy, and 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 you have to be very. You have to. Your concentration has to be top notch here, mm. because you have to find the right blocks to.
to remove. So has has the president ever been mad at you for something you said? The answer to that question? Because I saw in an interview you said that, that part of your work is also advising the president. Yes. yes. So as an advisor to the president, has has he ever called you and told you, Zach, this is this is not the way it goes? Well, it's a good question because I would say he has never called me to say it is not the way it should be done. He's never reprimanded me. But on whether he has ever been mad or angry about my sentiment, I would answer and say, not one time that I knew. If he has, I never got to know. Because I assure you, if the president would be angry at me, that would be that would be that would be akin to death sentence. The feeling, I mean, I, I'm not talking about death, but I'm mm. saying it would be it would be a vote of no confidence. If what you say could anger your appointing authority and the president of the nation, the head of the state, that could be as good as a, a condemnation. But the president is not easily angered by sentiments because he allowed people to speak unless what you are speaking is expressly out of order. Mm -hmm. He rarely take offense by the speaking mm. from his uh, servants. Wow. Yeah. I think uh, you're going to beat me at this game. I have a feeling. <laughs> no, I don't believe I have, it. I have, I have, I've, already, I've already given you... I have a feeling. Is it? I've given you the leeway. It seems like I'm running out of blocks. I've given you the leeway. Anyway, as a young person, tell yes. us, have you ever made any investment decisions that you have regretted before? Uh, emotional or financial? Financial decisions. Okay. No. Because I don't have a lot of money, so I've not invested. <laughs> I don't. I, 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 surely, I don't have money. I just have enough to eat. This is this is the first time from my salary I have interacted with money that could be of any considerable figure. Before then, I was just eating, drinking, and living. And so you can it relate to many young people. Yeah, that, no, that, but they cannot believe me. So I, I have no need of telling them. Mm -hmm. I cannot go convincing them. You know uh, the truth is. Eh? The first time I bought a piece of land it was a way it was when I was thirty, and this piece of land does not even benefit me directly because it was for my mother. And then a few other coins up and down. I bought I I, I brought I, in that piece of land is half an acre. Then I built her a small a small hut for her to be living. I have never made any other investment after that until now I became the chief administrative secretary. And after a few months, now uh, I was enabled to get a small loan, mixing with a few amounts of money I saved as salaries. Now I bought a small land for myself. I hope I will build in the coming days if God, uh, if God keeps me longer here uh, or whatever other plan he may have. At least I have a small piece of land. It's a quarter of an acre that I can put up a small hut for mm. my my children and my wife. Wow. Yeah. So, so I've not made a decision I could say, unless you are saying, uh, maybe to answer your question, the only bad financial decision I made was going to a hotel and eating uh, a plate of food that costed me a thousand when I had only 800. <laughs> 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 so what did you do? Did no, you, I, you I, have, I, I have a good uh, tongue. And you I, talked your way out yeah, of it? Yeah, I talked my way out. Yeah, but <laughs> let me tell you guys, I know that Zach can talk his way out of anything. So, so what did you tell? Did you talk to the manager? I, I told them the truth. Uh -huh. uh, I told them to sentence me as they would wish. Uh -huh. But this was not out of uh, uh, malice. I was just of ambitious as far as my stomach is concerned. <laughs> but I've never made surely the young people watching us here and uh, those who are ahead of us. Yeah, I'm happy I never made uh, such decision. But it's because I had no money. If I had no, if I had money, perhaps I would have made this stupid decision by by now. <laughs> but I didn't have money. It, it takes you to have money to make a bad decision. Yeah, yeah. So that's a very. I like that answer. It's very honest of you. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Uh, okay. It, this thing is so unstable. 
it is so 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 unstable so tell us about your your mom you my mother yeah yeah we are, we are three mm-hmm. my mother brought us singly mm-hmm. we are three boys i'm the youngest mm-hmm. the other two are uh, trying their best at home mm-hmm. to keep their families uh, stable mm-hmm. but my mom uh, is now a happy uh, lady rearing her cows and living in a good hut without paying rent for the first time in her life mm. yeah where did, you, there. where did you grow up in Mburanga county in a district called Kigumo in a sub center called Kigumo oh Kigumo yeah i come from Marago oh yeah then we are neighbors <laughs> we are neighbors, <laughs> we, are neighbors. <laughs> we are just we are actually they are neighboring constituency yeah, yeah there are you know places called Gatheraga Koigo Gatheraga Koigo Gashosho uh, all those areas yeah i know that's where i come from all actually, those places. that's where the cabinet secretary for roads come from urban development and infrastructure mm-hmm. james masharia he is also from uh, that district in a place called Gashosho uh, Gashosho yeah on your way to on your way to Marago ah mm. see so that's where i, I grew up Uh-huh. Uh, that's why I went to second uh, primary school that's why I grew first of all then went to school that's why I went to church that's where I'm known by people that's where our kings people stay mm-hmm. and then that's uh, the place I also settled my parent and uh, I suppose uh, maybe that's where I also build my village home if if I get enough money in this life I will buy a acre of land there or two mm-hmm. then put up a house okay mm. Seems like you you beating me at this. Uh, I I I'm no, not still there. Let, any, let's go together. I'm not seeing any any more blocks to I can see one that you can uh, play around with. Um ah uh, Good. <laughs> have you have destroyed the whole empire? Mimi ni mwangu senti bebe. The house of the house of cards have crumbled. The house of blocks. The house of blocks has crumbled. Anyway, no no either but uh, it was good while it lasted. Yeah, it was good while it lasted. Uh, it's good to know that Zack can beat me at Jenga. I lost Zack. <laughs> <laughs> he had a very good strategy he removed the blocks from below so that uh, the whole thing would become unstable that's a strategy you remove you hit the the first the, the we, we can the base we can the base mm. the whole thing crumbles the whole the whole thing crumbles anyway but it's also a way of risk if you don't take risks in life you cannot uh, get gains it was a risk because mm. i didn't leave you i i destabilized the base yes yeah. but i still was working with you <laughs> And, and I could as well have become the victim of my own mistakes. <laughs> yeah, you could have you could have come. But yeah. I remember the block you removed from here that's what I was disabled the whole tower. Mm-hmm. But anyway, uh as we wind up the interview, tell us yes. after a long day at the office, mm-hmm. what do you do? Uh two to things. Unwind? Okay, post corona, uh, rather pre corona and now corona times. Within corona times, after office home because there are no hotels to go, there are no meetings to meet people, there are uh, no the activities after work there are no meetings i mean so you just do zoom meetings uh, class whatever what i did before corona and you know i was appointed before corona two months then corona came after two months after work i used to go to school because i'm pursuing degree in law mm. from the university of nairobi and i was supposed to finish this year However, uh, I will not be able to finish. Nobody is going to finish anything this year. Yeah. Uh, as far as academy is concerned. And that's how I spent my time after that. But before I was appointed also because my life did not change drastically in terms of the way I organize my time. First of all, I don't drink alcohol. I'm not I'm a teetotaler. That means I don't have much time for social drinking. And that's why basically I went back to school. to save that time where you know after what you are doing now journey you are going somewhere to booze you know because i don't take alcohol i find myself after work going to do uh, when i'm not going to school maybe saturday i hang out with friends we have a kanya machoma uh, something else i like people don't know i like uh, driving alone in places i don't know 
just to find out where the roads lead with a good music. I like it a lot. Sometimes I do it with my wife. Uh, we go around uh, road trips. I've made road trips to several places in this country because you just need a full tank and uh, a good mech uh, a good engine. Then uh, you can go where you want and enjoy that way. So on Saturdays and Sunday, most of the time I would spend my time with friends, sometimes with family, and also reading book. I can drive into a place I don't know, park the car, and then put it off, open the panes, uh, pull them down, and then start reading for two, three, or four hours. After that, I'm good to go back home. Mm. That's how I spend my time after class. Uh, rather after work, when, 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 when now I have no classes, and also to go home. You know, when one has a, a young child in the house, it is always good to look forward to go home. You go uh, engage them. Because I know a day will come when I don't have much time for, you know, much time for family. So when I have time for it now, I invest heavily. So that when I'll be absent, I have some stock that they can eat from. There's a question I wanted to ask you. Mm. Uh, were you part of the, the committee that advised the president that the schools should remain closed during coronavirus? Yes. Why, why did you decide to do so? We, we, uh, that, that committee is called the Larger, Larger Stakeholders Committee. It uh, sits at Kenya, Industry, uh, Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development, KICD. Uh, and we sat this Monday to review the decision to close down completely until January. We are meeting again on Monday to make dates of reopening because we think we may reopen before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. The reason we made those decisions then were based by advice from the Minister of Health projections that coronavirus is going to be at the peak around the end of August, beginning of September. And it would be unwise then to take children to school when the disease is at its best. That would expose them. But more importantly, because children are symptomatic, that would expose their parents. That would expose their teachers. That would expose our elderly. And we foresaw a situation where the entire system of our elderly people would collapse and kill them. So we advised the closing of institution indefinitely until the end of the year, or upon the review advised by changing behavior of coronavirus. Now coronavirus is changing the behavior. That's why we have also reconsidered our move, because we are not static. That committee is led by the president himself, and when he's not available, he delegates that to the cabinet secretary for education. And then he has been our chair along all this line. And I hope on Monday we'll give a substantive decision. Kenyans should be eager. Monday we'll be meeting to give a decision. Okay. Thank you so much, Zach, for it coming on the show. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for playing Jenga with me. Although I've thank lost you. to Zach on this one. No, we can do a, re a, re a rematch. We'll do a rematch on yeah, the yeah. next show, by the way. Thank you so much for walking. <laughs> wow. <laughs> thank you so much for watching Talking Heads. My name is Kibani Mbogwa. We'll see you again here on Kenyanswithio.ke for more personalities. Tell us who you want us to bring. Tell us on the comment section who do you want to see play Jenga. See if they can beat me at Jenga. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again next time.